Love that last uh <laughs> there before it all starts so one one of these days as we get more comfortable we'll just have to put our screens small while during the intro because i think y'all would have a good laugh <laughs> yeah man but maybe we'll just do a remix and just extend the countdown into the show and just have a just a dance party, you know? Like. Totally. I'm not going to do it if we don't have some members live, though. So, you know, like our audience, right. y'all got to show up. And uh, we're just going to do it. We're going to do a streaming dance party. Speaking of dance party and working out, you'll have to excuse me. I'm the uh, Irish-American here who's all red-faced because I was I was working out uh, leading up to this. So what are you, what are you going to do? Bro, that's great, man. You're moving. You're exercising, man. That's wonderful. Trying to, trying to stay healthy. I'll be, I'll be sipping down the water here. Cool, brother. Well, you know, we got a couple of really exciting things to to talk about um, yes. today, y'all, on Live with Diamonds and Music, episode 13, Lucky number 13. Uh, today's Thursday, June 2nd, uh, 2022. Um, you know, we briefly mentioned the uh, the School of Van Cleef and Arpels last, um, last week, just kind of in the context of jewelry history and, and the yeah. rich history of... of uh, metallurgy and um you and know i want to give them a quick sample pasquale before if anybody because sometimes people tune in in the beginning and come back later we see that we're also going to talk about an incredible partner and friend of ours vibrant payments that is a payment processor so if you have a business if anyone in your family has a business this is the episode to watch. There is definitely some serious business value for here, so stay tuned or come back. Yeah, it's, so let's talk about let's 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 connect ourselves to last week first. Sorry for the the bold interruption, but I want to plant the seed. No worries. So, um, yeah, and it's you know it's really it's good to share resources because so many uh, family businesses and businesses period just kind of uh, take for granted that they can actually get a better deal on their credit card processing so um yeah so let's go ahead and look, um look at that look at that the caliber of graphic design and art My so God. i was uh wow. you know i signed up for uh, briefly mentioned last week about this school this it's a jewelry school guys if uh, if uh you know totally geeking out here but you know i'm just fascinated with uh the world of jewelry making and and and, and the people mm -hmm. that have kind of uh, reach the pinnacle, the best people in that world. And so Van Cleef and Arpels, which is a jewelry house from Paris originally, their worldwide brand. Now I think they're part of the Richemont Consortium. But um, the point is, is that um, they've opened up an online uh, and in-person school, a jewelry school, and they have books now available. I'm just taking the mm -hmm. deep dive. And so today I attended a webinar just right before um, our show here. And, uh, it was basically all about, you know, engraved, uh, jewels. So for example, cameos and intaglios, like oh. basically any stone that that's engraved on it. And so to give you a little historical context, um, these pieces that we're going to briefly see, uh, in the slideshow are 16th century, um, kind of inspirations that were inspired from, the antiquities. So, um, as you know, during wow. the Renaissance, a lot of um, you know mm -hmm. Roman and Greek myth mythological themes and motifs were brought mm -hmm. back, and uh, we see that in the artwork and the jewelry and the architecture, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. So it was an insanely, like I was surprised mm -hmm. at how clear the video was of these pieces. So um, 
you know, uh, these are just screenshots, so pardon the the quality. But um, I just kind of wanted to go over a few of the the pieces. And so the 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 series is called Discover, Wonder, and Learn. And I'll put up in a minute the the website. It's just. Uh, I, uh, I love that little piece that's right on there. I can't not say it. That fairy that has like, my God, I want, do you think those are diamonds on the wings? Those are, or those are definitely diamonds and rubies. <clears throat> um, and so, yeah. And so the, the, the curator of, uh, basically it was a, it's a private collection. Um, <clears throat> it's a, uh, wow. this guy named Guy Laudrier. And, and, uh, so, the curator was named Philippe, and and he's from the Louvre, but he was doing this expo for um, for Van Cleef and Ar Arpels, you know, the school L'Ecole Van Cleef. No, so it's it's a it's a school that just the examples come from the Louvre Museum. That's all. So here's the um, <laughs> the next one's about diamonds, which is going to be really cool. I'm going to share this information, guys. It's just fascinating. So here's uh, yeah. I'm going to kind of go in in uh, reverse chronological order. So this is uh um, you know, uh, uh, this is, um, I believe it's, uh, Jupiter who mm -hmm. is, uh, later became known as, as Zeus. And, um, and this is Saturn's, Saturn's, um, uh, sun. So you, you see the, the detail on the cameo, like, you know, just an incredible work. You guys, this is like all hand done. The second piece is, uh, Alexander the great who was, um, Depicted as, uh, <clears throat> I think it's Amon, A M O N, which is the mm. the kind of Egyptian version of um, of the father of the gods, which the word Amen actually comes from that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is Alexander the Great. You, you see the word; it looks like a, a stone sculpture. A lot of these pieces are yeah. like two, three centimeters high; like they're tiny. These are pieces of jewelry, often rings and brooches, and um, but like the amount of detail for the tools that they had available, you know, to them, uh, is absolutely incredible guys. So, um, that you know, incredible. you can see in that piece in particular of Alexander, how they're using some of the natural, I don't know how to tell, call it grain and contours of the stone. That's amazing. <clears throat> yeah. And that's a great point because that you, you only can use the, the you know, you, you have to work with the material at hand. And so the mm -hmm. stone kind of dictates, as I found out with mm -hmm. Ramon Byrne, um, you know, with, with the, uh, the larger size musical instruments that he does. Um, this was later on in the Byzantine period. It was, uh, you know, wow. so you imagine all these courts, the court jewelers and the court mm -hmm. artisans that were, um, you know, commissioned, uh by the uh the particular kings and queens of um wow. of the different areas of europe of of spain and france and you know lombardy as you know italy was not unified until 1862 i believe and so you yeah, have just a bunch of small kingdoms you know and so this is just a small sample of some of the work guys um this is hercules i want to kind of zoom in on this um look wow. at the uh the detail on his beard like someone literally took mm -hmm. uh whatever tools they use they're kind of like dentist yeah. tools you know and 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 hand carve this stuff guys i mean it's it's beautiful it's absolutely gorgeous i kind of just wanted to share um the webinar that i, I attended and i was just wow. inspired by it. this these are the two gentlemen that were walking around the museum uh, uh you can see the little screen and screen thing so they were kind of just explaining each piece and and so forth and the um what uh, i think the that? Yeah, look at this. So this is actually, um, that. yeah. And so like the whole idea of, and there's books also, like I encourage anyone who's remotely <laughs> interested in art or art history or jewelry history to check out some of these um, courses and books. And yesterday I looked on the website and they have a series of books that explain different genres of jewelry making. And one of them was, uh, I think it was called like Men's Rings. And it was a collection of like 6,000 men's rings from antiquity all the way up to the mm -hmm. renaissance and and so a lot of these families these noble families would use mm -hmm. their family crest or the the middle section of the of the ring to kind of stamp you know if they're sending a letter to the you know sending a message to a different region or whatever and sending their mm -hmm. messenger out the envelope was sealed with this wax you know and then the mm -hmm. wax imprint and and this goes back to you know before roman times and so yeah of course. yeah absolutely wow so that's a ring for someone's seal that is an 
<clears throat> a beautiful ring, my God. Yeah, and I'm kind of like speeding through Quality of that gold. But, you know, I just kind of want to like emphasize the idea of, um, <clears throat> you know, like just bringing back the classics, like what we're going to do with the collabs at Diamonds mm -hmm. and Music with uh, the music collection with Ramon Byrne. And, and, you know, I was actually had a great conversation with Ramon yesterday, mm -hmm. the stone sculptor. We talked for about an hour and uh, he kind of wanted to find out more about the process of, you know, making these pieces of jewelry and stuff because he works in larger scale, obviously. But, um, yeah. you know, and I kind of like was mentioning to him that I, I wanted to, you know, realize some of these pieces like the Jimi Hendrix guitar piece in uh, that's going to be the first piece um, in metals, but also like in stone and, and be open to to going back to this sort of technique. I just have to find it's a matter of working with the right people, guys, you know, and, and, yeah. and so this is uh, definitely, you know, for me, a learning experience as far as like getting out of the box and, and um, you know, just uh, doing a lot of cool stuff. So I wanted to share this. I will post um, the uh, the link to the, um, I think it's called uh, L'Ecole Van Cleef Arpels. Pardon <laughs> my, my terrible French, guys, but... Um, that was pretty good. Thank you. Um, at least for you know for to my ears as an american but yeah i think it's just all about craftsmanship too and that that legacy and the history of craftsmanship and the art of jewelry and you know people like i just love how passionate you are about all of this and pour yourself in you know s some few people might be interested as well but i think a lot of people it's like wow their, you know, other local jeweler or the guy at the shopping mall in the jewelry store um, probably isn't educating themselves like this, to be blunt about it. I mean, maybe they are. I don't know. But I'm, I'm proud that uh, you're my friend and partner and you're so passionate about all this and that we're sharing. This. It's really just um, it's fascinating, brother, like to because, to, you know, like I'm always like a, a big advocate of learning what came before me in order to to mm. do it's like learning the rules before you break them type of idea you know and um so this is the uh the website that i shared l'ecole van cleef arpels which is just the school of van cleef and arpels which is this online it's a blended school guys it's in person you can go to paris if you're going on vacation to paris take a class i'm certainly mm -hmm. going to dive into physical classes next year but there's also a lot of online courses as well as materials to study like um, uh, books and so forth. So I just wanted to share with you the homepage there. It's right here on the screen, Le Col Van Cleef and Arpels. So, uh, yeah, and keep bringing it to us, you know. I mean, there'll be an audience and I might take a class at some point. But, you know, I, I think as you keep, you know, taking this was just a few minutes for you to share yeah. Um, a class and to like learn keep yeah let's keep being a resource for all that knowledge and information and history yeah i'm, I'm going to share there's an event um coming up here at the uh, bowers museum which is in santa Ana. it's right here in southern california and they're doing a, a an event um that's co that's sponsored by um this school the, the van cleef and our, our pals school so like mm -hmm. it's just amazing you know to, to to know that these guys are are um are not um hiding all their secrets so to speak they yeah. are you know like accessible. and it's kind of indicative of their whole philosophy and dna of the brand it's it's, mm. it's just absolutely amazing guys so um just wanted to share let me uh stop my screen and and uh i'll hand it over to you bill yeah yeah well speaking of of high quality we're all about high quality and sharing i think that's our our episode is you know to share we'll get to some pieces too and maybe a little bit of shopping um as well it's always fun to shop together a little bit but i think everybody knows you know they can they can they can shop themselves as well um so on the diamonds and music site um if when anyone makes a transaction and you don't know on the back end our merchant services um partner is a startup that's uh with a friend of mine and ours now, both of ours, um, Stephen Morton, who uh, founded Vibrant Payments. So let's just do a little a little screen share here, so you can get an an idea. This is the 
the homepage of their site, their logo. I'm a very visual person, so I always like that. Uh, thank you, Pasquale, for the nice uh, site on the bottom. So you're like, well, what's this? This is not very exciting at all, but you know, it's about value, right? And about business value. And there's a lot just like the jewelry world sure. and sort of, you know, elite jewelry world that Von, you know, Pels is a part of that it's about sharing information. And if you own a business or where you work perhaps, and you want to get a win at work, um, it's worth the conversation if you know somebody in your family or in your life or a friend that owns a business and any of those places or businesses take credit cards, an enormous amount of businesses pay 3% or 2% on their transactions. And Stephen at Vibrant Payments, who we'll have another episode with, can get that down from 1% to 0% rates. It's just kind of incredible what he does and how much he's disrupting the industry. And, you know, he's got everything that any other payment processor has. He actually came up, and we can talk about Stephen about this, but just to establish a little bit, he is in Washington State where I am, but the far eastern edge near Spokane, Washington. Mm. Some people have heard of Gonzaga University is there, which has a <clears throat> nationally famous basketball team that won the national championship a couple of years ago. And um, they uh, it's also the home of Bing Crosby, the singer. And just east of there is Liberty Lake, Washington, where Stevens based, but it's right on the Idaho border. Mm. And and people, you, if you like tech, you know, the tech industry and a little bit of tech history, Boise, Idaho is actually where PayPal was developed and came from. And one of the original three partners of PayPal was Elon Musk. That was where he had one of his first really big successes that bankrolled a lot of what else he's done. He also had some money to put into that business and came from it. And then the kind of current owner who bought out his partners, Peter Thiel is very famous. Um, and, uh, and, and has a reputation for being an aggressive businessman and yeah. building his empire. And then uh, the third partner is Bruce. And I'll let Stephen talk to that about that. But Steve worked, Stephen worked with Bruce for a long time in the payment processing and digital revolution of payment processing. And, you know, has been in the industry for a long time, saw kind of what has gone on. And it's, it's in Stephen's words, you know, it's a pretty horrible industry. Um, a lot of businesses, large, medium, and small, get kind of raked over the coals through a number of middlemen and a lot of fees and a fee structure that they don't really understand. Right. And they're paying more than they need to on their hard-earned business. I mean, you know, at, at, at Angelucci Jewelry, at Diamonds and Music, at anybody's business, when you're shopping and we earn your business, when anyone works hard and earns a customer's business, and then for the convenience of taking a credit card, you might be paying 3% on your transaction. Well, what the, you know, most people chalk that up, whatever. Well, it's, it's, yeah, you know, from the perspective of, of a business owner, like, uh, pardon the interruption, but you know, most, yeah, people, no, go. most people, I would argue to say, um, just kind of think, oh, this is the cost of doing business. I don't have exactly. time or even want to compare. It's literally just like send us, you know, your your um, your statements, and we'll do a side by side comparison. And and guys, like my folks had a jewelry store for thirty plus years. Not once did they ever uh, think about getting a lower rate. I mean, we're talking about potentially thousands of dollars in savings. You know, That's it. it all adds up. What's that, in it for me? Saving a lot of money. That's mm -hmm. period. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing to get those statements from businesses, show them the side by side. And, and you know, a smaller business that's doing ten to $20,000 a month, um, you know, suddenly in, an, in a year, you can save them like eight to $10,000 in a year because it adds up. Well, it didn't sound like, well, to any small business, if you tell them that you have a fixed cost, 
that, that you just assume, like you said, well, that's just the cost of doing business. It's, it's not that much on every transaction. Yeah, it's a bit, but it's a smaller percentage of, of my, my monthly revenue. We'll add it up over a year. And if I can put $10,000 back into your business, imagine you know what you can do with that sure. right now. And and that's a small business. That was my my you know the local dry cleaner is someone that has good steady business. It scales from there. You know you get into much larger. I mean, if you work at a corporation, we do corporations that do business to business transactions in the outdoor world. Or you know, Stephen works with several hospitals and medical industry world. And I mean, you know, you're starting to talk literally about savings that are fifty to a hundred thousand dollars annually, right, or more. I mean, the numbers get, cons- you know, it scales because it's percentages. And, right. you know, if you're paying at 2 to 3%, you're not very sophisticated. So so this is what happens to a lot of people. And I don't know if I can zoom in on that. I guess what I could do to make it a little more legible is I could zoom my screen a little bit. That's a bit of what I like to call an, an eye chart. Like can you make that a little bit bigger, you know, brother? Uh, I know there's yeah, yeah, let's keep flat going. rate and pricing. I'll, and I'll share this. Yeah, Cheers. for sure. Why don't we just make it really big? And so a lot of people, you know, a lot of businesses and, and or people that have a side hustle, they're they're at like Stripe. That's flat sure. rate pricing. Everyone's heard of Stripe and of Square. Stripe and Square for most customers have you this this little, you know, I'll call it a dark brown line is right under 3%. They're at 2.99%. And then you pay. 2.99% of any and all transactions. And, and what's this blue down here? Okay, so what am I paying of? These are all different types of cards. <clears throat> this is what you don't see, or if you're a fairly sophisticated business or you have someone in finance, they know that this is what's called all of this kind of blue static is actually, it is, it's moving, is called the interchange. Mm. Interchange is the wholesale actual price of the credit card. And down here at the bottom, at under 0.5% to 0% are, are like a really good example is an ATM check card. <clears throat> Every time anyone uses an ATM check card, it's at like 0% basically. It's the same as cash in the finance world. <clears throat> I'll get back to that in a minute. And those vendors and gas stations and mini marts that are forced to, or that charge you <laughs> for using your ATM card, wow, they're getting scammed. That's a sign of a scam. You probably always knew that. You always wondered about it. Um, I'll explain why. Now, way up over here is your expensive um, rewards cards. Mm-hmm. So this is those big travel rewards cards. I love, I have one of them and love those. Or a luxury, what's called a luxury card, like everyone knows the name of the black card, the Amex black card. But you know, all major, right. you know, Capital One and, and every major, you know, MasterCard, they all have their version now of a high end luxury card. But most transactions fall somewhere in here, mm-hmm. right? And when you use a ATM check card, right, okay. of any kind that's cash, this is the profit that Stripe or Square are making. Got it. This is their profit. So the credit card processing company, whoever they are, makes the, mm-hmm. the profit is in between the cost of, of their wholesale cost and then the mm-hmm. price they're paying you. So that's somewhere, sometimes upwards of two to mm-hmm. two and a half, almost 3%. Yep. And you get scammed at those shops because, and I try to talk to those shops all the time that say, well, if you use your ATM fee, you got to, you got to, your card, you got to use, you got to pay a little fee, right? If you use your ATM yep. card, you got to pay a little fee. Well, because they're locked in at 2.99%, no matter what card is being used. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And and so this they're getting soaked for this profit with whoever their merchant services provider is. That's what Vibrant Payments is, is a merchant services provider. Now, next tier. So we're like, OK, you like rate. How, how great this yeah. is. You're 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 giving insight that is never this is the most transparent. Like this is great. I mean, mm-hmm. this is an opportunity. And and we're talking to you, jewelers, wholesaler and and and, mm-hmm. and, and jeweler, you know, retail guys like, you know. It's time to to you know cut the fat. This is a great opportunity, guys. Just to, to listen and learn. Yeah. And and if you're at a bigger business or more sophisticated, you might have tiered pricing. So basically, if mm-hmm. you consider each step of this staircase looking line mm-hmm. like 
buckets. You could imagine that this part of the line is bucket one, this is bucket two, and this is the rest is bucket three. And basically what they'll do is they'll tier or put all of your transactions into a bucket. So those ATM cards, we'll have them down here at one point, you know, that's probably 1.65, right? And then this is their profit. And then, you know, these mid-tier cards will do some more that are at 2.75, but then we'll bump you up for anything expensive and a whole lot more of them. You see this line is a lot longer, right? Or wider in this chart. Uh, you know, we'll have you at like 3.75. We say, oh, we get you this tiered pricing, but you can imagine how those profits add up over time. So Vibrant Payments offers what they call cost plus pricing. And this is their line. They follow the interchange. That's why it goes up and down. This is, this is moving. These rates change. It's connected to the financial market. Like this is this is not very accurate, but it's uh, an example, um, maybe a metaphor that's that's easier for people to get a hold of, because in a way it's tied to the stock market, to the big indexes, and to interest rates um, in general. So the the opportunity to potentially keep almost everything at right around one percent, you know, or follow the interchange. This the, the line with vibrant payments of 1% can extend much further over uh, in terms of, of the payments is, is a huge, significant um, savings for people. And particularly, I'll just say lastly, what, you know, why are we talking about this? We were talking about it this week because I'm going to JCK and this is a big part of the business. I'm there for technology solutions. You know, I'm, we're, I'm e-commerce, digital marketing and payment processing these technology solutions coming to the jewelry, luxury goods, there's high-end luxury jewelry, but but it's all retail across all that. And like I said earlier, applicable to to any business that's taking credit cards. Yeah. So so there's an, an, an opportunity. Yeah, it's huge what you're talking about. And, and again, um, I would venture to say that probably the vast majority, if not even 40, 50% of the wholesalers and retailers. And there's literally thousands of them, guys. I work with, and I'm a small fry, 12 to 15 vendors. And, um, you, you know, uh, this opportunity to just take a look, it, we're not saying, hey, switch over. Well, I've been with my company for 50 years. Well, right. that's fine. Let's just take a look. And, you know, we, we're all about a consultative um approach and our mm -hmm. partnership with steven and vibrant payments is a uh, is a valuable one we use it ourselves yep. and we're, we're saving you know we're saving concrete dollars every each and every single month guys and and so yeah. uh, it literally just takes um you know checking out the uh the um doing a side-by-side -side comparison of what you have your state your credit card statements and and what we can do and if you you you, you can if what you have is great then fine we're, we're still friends and, and that's yeah. okay but it's you get worth to look it black and white what what could you do with an extra 10k a year digital marketing hire a, 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 a you know whatever social media like there's mm -hmm. um you know savings are always a good thing and people say oh well it's going to be really inconvenient i have this system well, we can integrate with most systems. Yep, so vibrant see. payment is, yeah, we're able to like, in some cases, transition with just a phone call or just digitally online mm -hmm. to switch it from, uh, you know, from uh, a previous credit card processor to to our system. So it's- yeah. uh, And the other concern a lot of people have is security, right? They're, they're like, well, what's this, you know, new company? I've never heard of who you're talking about. Are, are they small? Is that way they're doing this? Vibrant Payments is partnered with the largest payment processors, probably bigger than who you or a lot of your businesses or even where you work might be using. So Card Connect is our technology, is the technology partner, mm. which is owned by Fiserv. I, I think at the bottom they talk about their yeah their contractual um, you know partners right. It, it, they're registered and contracted with Card Connect as well as Elevon. We're a little bit smaller. Card Connect is owned by Fiserv. Fiserv was, they bought, they're one, they're one of the biggest financial services companies in the world. 
Um, I mean, you can look them up. They're publicly traded. Um, they bought Card Connect. They. Hey, bud, you're frozen. <clears throat> oh, Bill actually froze there, guys. Hopefully, he can come back. Um, but uh, let me continue. Uh, hopefully, Bill will be joining us soon. Uh, Technology is great when it works. Um, so uh, let's see if we can add him back in here. Um, ta -da 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 -da. Nope. <clears throat> guys, um, I want to thank you guys for um, being with us today. Let me just put up on the screen um, the two websites that we have. So uh, Angelucci Jewelry is my uh, main sort of um, squeeze here. I've been doing this for 30 years, family business, four generations. I'm going to be um, on vacation in Italy starting in uh, a few weeks. So I'm going to be broadcasting from there. It's really exciting, guys. I'm going to be, um, I just bought a drone. And so I'm going to be taking a lot of footage of my mom's hometown, Atina, and just kind of like telling my story. Because, you know, people can buy things, products and services really anywhere, right? So why the heck should I buy from you? Um, you know, it's all about presenting a story. So um, it's a story of excellence. It's a story of survival. It's a story of, um, you know, my parents coming over to this country in 1969. It's, it's great. So every family has their unique story. And I was lucky enough to take over the family business in 2010. And I renamed it our, you know, our family name, Angelucci. Um, but, you know, please check out the website and... Uh, <clears throat> do, 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 do. also uh, diamonds and music so reach out to bill uh, and i or either of us and we will uh be happy to be in service uh to you which means whatever questions you have about jewelry whether it's a uh, appraisals or you know repairs or custom pieces or you want to you know reuse and repurpose um some old jewelry that you had from one of your family members, your mom or dad or grandpa, um, we can help you out. So um, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Uh, this is the 13th edition of Live with Diamonds and Music. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grazie mille. Um, we say in, in Italian, you know, piano, piano, se va lontano, which kind of translates to, uh, you know, take things slow and you're going to go very, very far. So um, it's always a pleasure. Have a lovely uh, rest of the week, everyone, and uh, have a great day. This is Pasquale Angelucci signing out. Stay close.